Wow, just wow. Hi, welcome to the Nexus. The theme this week is science, which is an extraordinary stroke of luck, as Dan was killed by a series of inexplicable time paradoxes after last week's show. Thankfully, I've been able to rebuild him using science. And corpses. Mostly corpses. Anyway, while the electrodes warm up, here's the hypothesis and method for this week's show. We'll run down the latest Xbox news from Pacific City Radness to historically dubious madness. We'll take a look at the scientific marvel that is the Kinect sensor. The arcade cabinet will attempt to have a bloody good time with bloody good time. And we look at the latest developments in popular science. Now live, you abomination, live! <laughs> what did you do that for? I needed someone to read the news. You toyed with the fundamentals of nature. You defied the proper order of things. Laughed in the face of God just so you didn't have to read this week's news. Pretty much, yeah. You're a monster, man! Look, just do it, all right, or I'll give you a dog's head again. I'll be good. Yeah. If, like me, you spent hours being verbally abused by a bipolar old man with suspected psychosis who insists on calling you agents, you've A, probably met my granddad, or B, played a lot of Crackdown 2. Assuming it's the latter, there's a medium to high chance that the announcement of a new game add-on called Deluge will cause some form of reaction that could be construed as a sign of excitement or anticipation. Released on the 16th of November, Deluge introduces a pair of new co-op modes. The eponymous first mode is Crackdown 2's answer to Horde or Firefight, with four players battling against wave after wave of battles, while the second, Capture the Orb, will be familiar to anyone who's attended its flag-based variants, only it features a lot more jumping off preposterously high buildings. A trial version featuring just Capture the Orb 16-player Orb Catchery will be available for now, while the premium version, which features both modes, new achievements and Avatar Awards, and tweaks to the main campaign, will leave you 560 Microsoft points lighter. As an added bonus, if you pick up Crackdown 2 Project Sunburst or Windows Phone 7, your accomplishments will earn you bonuses for Deluge Mode. Likewise, high scores in Deluge Mode will contribute towards weapon upgrades in Project Sunburst, and all without wires. This is truly science in action. It appears that Dance Central 2 has been confirmed before the first game has even been released. Speaking to trade magazine MCV, the game's project director and former Freespot member Cass and Crooker said, We're looking at basic pre-production for Dance Central 2, but are mostly working on DLC right now. Harmonix boss and part-time mythical beast Alex Rogopoulos is confident of Dance Central's fortunes, roaring, I think that Dance Central has an opportunity to spark a phenomenon, much like the original Guitar Hero did. We'll see if the Half-Man Half-Unicorn's modestly worded prediction comes to pass when Dance Central launches alongside the Kinect Center on the 10th of November. Finally, scientists who have nothing better to do with their time have predicted that 9th of November will set a new record for the highest number of sick leave requests made in a single day. When asked for evidence to support their claim, they supplied this startling footage. More news next time, everyone. Look, I read the news. Is this really necessary? No, it's pretty funny, though. Hi, everyone. Uh, Call of Duty Black Ops. Uh, it's a big release. It's coming out on Tuesday, the 9th of November, and it's a simultaneous worldwide release. Mm. Activision are putting out a bunch of special editions for the game. Um, we did approach them, ask if we could get one to do an unboxing. They weren't very forthcoming, but uh, we found this outside the studio. It's apparently the super special edition, so I imagine it's the best one. So I'm quite excited about this, because yeah. the, uh, the, the, the other one just has that remote control car, but... I'm expecting yeah. great things from this. So let's have a look. Mm. Uh, first thing in the box is CD, CDR. Yep. Soundtrack CD. Uh, it says on the lining that it's 400 JPEGs of dogs wearing hats. Yeah. Useful. Uh, I'll just put that down there. Uh, what else have we got I've got a, 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 a jar of pickles. I, I guess for snacks if you're playing. Hungry multiplayer. Possibly. Um, I don't really get the relevance. Yes. Copy of the novel Vanity Fair by William Makepeace Thackeray. Fantastic. I've never mm. read that. Um, not quite sure what the relevance is to the main game, but 
Uh, yeah, it says it's, uh, it mixes ambition, greed, duplicity, coarseness, wealth, and poverty into a literary tour de force. That could be the story of Activision. So, yeah, well. The solar system is truly incredible. It contains more things than you can possibly imagine. Think of a thing. Oh, uh, harmonica. Well, it's a rhetorical question, but yes, it, it contains that. Think of something else. Fre frezzles. What? What's that? It's a, it's a kind of bacon flavoured crisp. I don't know, it probably contains that. The point is that the universe is vast and wonderful and contains all sorts of strange and unusual things. Things like these, the top five weird gaming peripherals of all time. Ah, the power glove. Anyone who had an NES in the 90s wanted one, mainly due to adverts like this. Now you and the games are one. There was also this guy in The Wizard, who, believe it or not, was the coolest guy in the world at the time. I love the power glove. It's so bad. Sadly, Cooley McQuiff here was right. The Power Glove was bad, being imprecise, difficult to control, and having only two games designed specifically for it. You can't deny it looks awesome though, which is probably why they still fetch a hefty price on eBay. That and this. The power glove. At some point in the early 1980s, Atari was so drunk with power, they decided they could control video games with their minds. Somewhere around the prototype stage, this transformed into controlling video games by wiggling your eyebrows around. Testing revealed that everyone who played the Atari Mind Link got massive headaches, so Atari responded with their classic reaction to every problem and buried every unit in the desert. Well, they cancelled the project, but they're probably out there in the desert somewhere. Someone go check. First of all, we want to say congratulations. You have in your possession the Sega Activator. The Sega Activator was an early attempt at full-body motion control, consisting of a plastic octagon that emitted infrared beams to work out what you were doing. There's no way they could make that overcomplicated, right? Panel 2 is the B button, panel 8 is the C button. Panels 1, 3, 5, and 7 act as the directional pad. Oh, but it's easy to set up, right? You'll need to recalibrate every time you turn on the Genesis or when you put in a different cartridge. Oh, let's move on, shall we? Longtime synesthesia enthusiast Tetsuya Mizuguchi was so intent on letting the player feel the music when playing his seminal shooter Reds that he thought it necessary to develop the trance vibrator. Resembling a button-free mouse and housed in a machine-washable sock, it plugged into a USB port and vibrated in time to the game's pulsing kick drum rhythms. We've no idea why it featured a protective sock, but it's possibly something to do with the buzzing brick's versatility. When interviewed to promote the game's release, Mizuguchi said, It's up to you to choose where you want to feel the vibration. You can put this vibrator on any part of your body. Maybe you can have a friend next to you while you play. She might be able to keep it for herself. I wanted to make it so you could have some sort of link with the person you're with. Hmm. Five years later, he told Eurogamer, That was kind of a joke, but a very serious joke. No sexual meaning. If you'd like to recreate the experience, Res HD on Xbox Live Arcade allows you to use up to three other controllers as makeshift trance vibrators. You'll have to knit your own protective socks, though. Steel Battalion was a fairly unremarkable mech combat game. What was remarkable was the controller that accompanied it, which featured two sticks, three pedals, and 40 buttons. Oh, and it cost around 200 US dollars, and was nearly three feet across, and only worked with Steel Battalion. Luckily, there's a new version of Steel Battalion coming out soon for Kinect, reducing the number of buttons needed from 40 to zero, which is great news, unless you're a button manufacturer. What else is in there? Uh, if I'm not mistaken, this is a antique Chinese opium pipe. You, you think that was salvaged from an actual black art? I, I'm sure Activision have their reasons. Lizard, squeaky lizard. <laughs> Some nunchucks. Of course, Kinect does away with the need for ridiculous controllers. Someone should probably tell Atomic Games in their game boat. Game it real indeed. Kinect started life at E3 2009 as Project Natal, with the aim of providing a controller-free gaming experience. Initial demos came in the form of ball-breaking game Ricochet, paint game Paint Party, and Peter Molyneux's slightly creepy virtual boy Milo. Hi, Milo, how are you doing? Hi, Claire, you okay? It was at E3 this year, though, that the sensor got its final name of Connect, in the normal way that products are named these days, a circus child manipulating an anagram while stood on a giant glowing ball in a room full of people wearing space ponchos. Now we're just a few short days away from release, and we've seen the full lineup of games that the sensor is launching with, so here's general manager of Microsoft Game Studios and face of Kinect, Kudo Sonoda, with the last word on Kinect. Well, you know, I think it's great to see Kinect showing up in all parts of the Xbox platform. You know, it's not just about the games, but, you know, really being able to control things like your movies and TV and music all through your voice and gestures. So, um, you know, again, I think those are all great parts of Kinect. You know, some people call Kinect motion technology, but it's not just about the full body motion 
controls. It's really about using your voice. It's about our human recognition technology. Just stand in front of the sensor, get signed right into Xbox Live. Those are all things that you can't get anywhere but on Xbox. You know it's going to be coming out You know, right after the U.S. launch. Everybody in uh, Europe will be able to go out and buy Connect. It's all November 10th. Okay, so we're playing Bloody Good Time. It's a uh, multiplayer only XBLA game um, yeah. developed by Scottish developer Outerlight, uh, published by Ubisoft. And uh, we're starting off, you, uh, you pick a map. Uh, we've got three maps to choose from. There's Spring Break Heartache, which is set on a beach. Uh, Murder Party on Halloween Hill, which is uh, set in this uh, creepy mansion. Then we've got The Killing in Vegas, which is obviously set in Las Vegas. But uh, I think we're going to go for the Halloween party. Yes. <laughs> so the, the plot of the game is, is what? That there's a, a mad director who's decided this is the best way to, to cast his latest movie. Yeah, there's a character called uh, Director X. Um, there was a mysterious uh, horror movie director, apparently, a number of years ago, who uh, was actually killing the actors in his movie. Is he related to Professor or Malcolm? Uh, I think, yeah, they're all part of the same family. Um, and the X-Men as well. They all, uh, all got the same dad. Oh. There's, there's different uh, game types, but um, the one we're playing at the moment, the hunt, is uh, basically the same. You have a target, you have to hunt down, and if you kill anyone who isn't your target, you're penalised. Um, but there's just a huge variety of different ways to, to take out your target in this, uh, in this game. There's traps all over the place, um, things like uh, buttons you press to make the floor fall away, or to electrify a room, or to make spikes shoot out of the place. But there's also absolutely tons of weapons, and they're all kind of uh, unusual weapons that you wouldn't usually expect to find in, uh, in an FTS. So when you're hunting somebody, when, you, when you're on a, what they call scenes of the different games that, the, uh, that each match is broken up into, they don't necessarily know that you're the guy hunting them? No, exactly. No, you don't know who the person hunting you is, all you know is your target. So, she, so sheathing weapons becomes kind of a, a tactical element of the game? Yeah, exactly. Also there are the houses and the, uh, the places where the death matches are taking place, um, they're also patrolled by security and if they see you running around with a gun out, you'll be spotted by security who will then give chase and taser you if they catch up to nice. you. Nice! So and that obviously leaves you completely vulnerable yeah, to attack. Yeah, totally vulnerable to attack. So if someone's trailing you, they see you getting tased by security, that's their chance to strike. Um, it's also, you have like these sim style uh, need indicators. So yeah. you've got your tiredness level, you've got uh, your toilet level, and your food and drink level. You don't just get points or star points in this for um, for kills, do you? It's all about the combination. So if you go up to your prey and you taunt them, you know, preferably if they're sat on a toilet, um, then then dispatch them, and then you perform a humiliation move. You're going to get more fame points than if you just did a straight run in and kill. Exactly. You get stars. Um, Ostensibly, these are all auditions for uh, Director X, so um, he's looking for people with star quality, and it's uh, people who perform the most ridiculously over-the-top kills are the people that he's looking for for his wonderful movies. <laughs> so, uh, so, bloody good time, does it live up to its name? Is it a bloody good time? Are you having a bloody good time I'm right now? I'm having a good time. I don't know uh, how bloody it is, there's not actually any blood in the game. So, uh, bit of a misnomer there, but uh, yeah, I think you know, you know, for people who don't like their FPSs to be so kind of po-faced and serious all the time, this is just a bit of uh, light-hearted fun. It's only 400 Microsoft points; it's incredibly cheap. Um, so, yeah, I would recommend people download it, give it a go, because uh, I am enjoying it. A mere 400 points, indeed, absolute bargain. And a copy of the game. Good, I'm, At last. I'm glad they included that. Um, yeah, we'd probably recommend you stick with the hardened or prestige editions of the game, to be honest. But um, thanks very much, Activision. Well, that's the conclusion for this week's show. If you want to... You are right there? Uh, yeah, it's an alien crystal. Don't look directly at it, yeah? Right. Well, if you want to suggest a feature for the show or just send in some artwork or even some music, then the Haunted Printer has received an upgrade by collecting together equipment from our lab and is now even more powerful than ever. <laughs> We'll be back soon with another show, so keep those submissions coming in and you could be in with a chance of winning an Xbox Live Arcade...
Andy, are you sure this is okay? Yeah, it's just a resonance cascade. I've got it under control. Right, okay. Well, we will be back soon with Sent You A Message too. So send in your burning Xbox 360 questions to the gamertag sent you a message, to the email send you a message at hotmail.com. Tweet us at sent you a message or visit our Facebook page at facebook.com slash sent you a message. See you next time, everyone. It was totally like this when I got here, I swear.